During the crisis of the 3rd century, there were at least 20 men who claimed to be the legitimate emperor of the Roman Empire, and many more who claimed the office but lacked any sort of backing, and many who arose temporarily and then sank back into the mist of time, forgotten in textual evidence and known really only through archaeology. This video, which will be extremely short because our evidence is extremely scant, is about one of these men, or possibly two of them. The only textual evidence we really have for this usurper, Uranius, comes from the history of Zosimus, who writes that the soldiers, after this event, forgetting by degrees their former regard for Alexander, appeared unwilling to put his commands in execution, and in order to avoid being punished for their negligence, excited public commotions in which they promoted the person named Antoninus to the empire. But he, being incapable of sustaining so weighty a charge, declined it. They chose in his stead Uranius, a man of low and servile condition whom they immediately placed before Alexander, dressed in purple, by which they intended to express more strongly their contempt for the emperor. Alexander, finding himself surrounded with so many difficulties, became changed, both in bodily constitution and in disposition, and was infected with an insatiable avarice, amassing riches with the utmost solicitude, which he confided to the care of his mother. What Zosimus is talking about here is the attempt of the emperor to engage in diplomacy with Germanic tribes during a campaign against them, which angered the Roman soldiers. So, they began looking for a replacement emperor, and they eventually selected, apparently, a man of slave ancestry for the task. It is not clear if this was meant to be a slight, since an officer, Maximinus, was eventually elected as emperor by the military. It's not even certain if this Uranius actually existed, but we do know that another man by the same name was active in Rome and Syria during the early 250s. In 252, the Persians, under Shapur I, attacked the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire, and the great inscription of Shapur lists the cities his army besieged and apparently destroyed. What is missing from that list is the city of Emesa. Shapur seems to have successfully made it into Roman territory, but he seems to have had some trouble leaving it, in part because it would seem that, due to the lack of governmental stability, a man in that city attempted to declare himself emperor and fight off the Persians. A priest of Elagabal named Uranius Antoninus established a local militia and defended the territory around Emesa, and for the next year and a half, he minted coins with the image of Elagabal on one side and his portrait on the other at the mint in Antioch. Zosimus does mention that during the reign of Gallienus, a man named Antoninus rebelled against him and was declared a usurper, and this may be the same person as Uranius Antoninus who fought the Persians, but historians are not certain. What is known is that he appears to have had little to no interest in becoming emperor, only in protecting local territory in Rome and Syria, with the minting of coins being done to give him some semblance of legitimacy in the region. But when Emperor Valerian took over and began to move towards the eastern provinces, Uranius apparently stopped producing coins, our main source of evidence for him, and sank back into the mist of time. We know nothing else about this mysterious defender of the Roman East, and likely never will. He was, and remains, a product of the chaos of the 3rd century.